Since the dawn of AI image generation, a whisker over a year ago, bizarrely, upscalers have become very important. AI image generators can only really generate images of 512 by 512 or 1024 by 1024, and their models tend to start breaking down after that. Even sophisticated ones like Midjourney, which do different aspect ratios, include built-in upscalers to make the picture bigger, even though they don't go too high. The reasons for this will become apparent in this video. Vance AI have been at the forefront of the modern AI image generation and editing phenomena since the very start. As an AI researcher and graphics guru, of course, I've come across their work before. Upscalers of one kind or another are built into all AI image generation software to take the quite small generated images and make them screen resolution 72 dpi or up to print resolution 300 dpi. They do this by a process of intelligent sharpening, line detection and smoothing. The finished effect makes a much sharper, much bigger image and adds very little in the way of detail. On some details, like eyes and mouths, the more sophisticated AIs can actually take details from similar eyes and mouths in its training set and use those to augment any blurry or otherwise unsalvageable elements from a picture. The granddaddy of upscalers, the Topaz Labs Gigapixel AI tool, was designed to do this for photographs and it does a fine job, but they all get their effect in pretty much the same way, smoothing and sharpening. It's not perfect as a means to get detail out of photos which have none, but it's better than sharpening alone, and obviously the usual rules apply. The better the image you put in, the better you get out. Upscalers, Vance AI included, do a lot better job on HD size assets, for example, than they do on 240 pixel postage stamps. So basically what you have with Vance AI's image upscaling is just that. Feed an image in one end, select the size you want it, and press the button, and out it pops the other end. There's a bit more to it, but in essence, it's that simple. In more serious use, obviously, it's a little more complex. While it is a push-button solution, there are a lot of controls you can use to alter and tweak the output from your upscale in a variety of creative ways. When you log into your account, you see the range of tools which Vance AI provides you. Image Enhancer, Upscale, Background Remover, Colorizer, Denoiser, Old Photo Repair, Retoucher, and so on. These tools are amazing, but let's not get distracted. We're here to use the upscaler. The upscaling tool opens with a blank canvas, ready for you to upload or drag and drop your image onto it, ready for processing. On the left, there is a history panel showing you all the pictures you processed till now, in case you want to go back to them. In the middle is where your current image goes. This is usually covered up by the helpful tooltips, animated suggestions as to how the different features work. These are great, but do sometimes get in the way, so they can be turned off. Just click in the greyed out text to disable tooltips, and they go away. This is fine as long as you don't hover over the tools on the right because the tooltips just pop right back up again. It's good to be able to get rid of them, albeit temporarily. On the right is the meat and potatoes, the controls for this utility. Across the top you have the three basic tools, enlarge, sharpen and denoise. Beneath that you have the different AI training models the system has been educated on, meaning types of images which need upscaling. These are standard, anime, art and CG, text, and a new one called Very Blurry and Compressed, which is pretty much the epitome of self-explanatory. Now then, underneath all of that is where you get to choose how big you want to go with your upscaling. One times, which is code for merely enhance, I guess. Then the more obvious two times, four times, and eight times, which are again self-explanatory. Under those you have buttons for video resolutions, presumably for stills from videos, with resolutions of 720p, 1080p, and 4K, as the options. Below that you have an additional size control called Custom, which pops open a control for you to set the precise resolution of your enlarged output. This is all very comprehensive, and I can't think of any other controls I would like on this tool. Finally you have Noise and Blur Suppression sliders, which you can tinker with manually or just flip the auto switch, and let Vance AI do the thinking for you, which is what I did most of the time. When you are done adjusting the settings, you simply push the Start to Process button, and away you go. After a short wait for processing, and it really doesn't take very long, your image is displayed showing a side-by-side -side comparison of the image before and after processing so that you can assess the quality of the render. If you judge it's perfect, you can opt to download it and spend your credits to do so. The power of allowing you to tinker about and try different looks before you pay cannot be overemphasized. Price-wise, it costs just $4.95 for 100 credits, $6.95 for 200 credits, 
$11.45 for 500 credits and $17.95 for 1,000 credits, and each image costs you just one credit to process. In summary, Vance AI Image Upscaler is a wonderful tool and so easy to use and also cost effective. If you've never used an upscaler before, it's really easy to get started and get great results. And I would say it's one of the cheapest options out there for low to moderate users. Okay, that's all for now. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.